Hey folks, welcome back to another review with yours truly, Sam Healy. Today we're taking a look at this little fella right here, Samurai Vassal. Uh, and this is a little card game that has been put out by Ice Makes. And uh, it is basically a bluffing game where you're trying to get the most trust points out of your daimyo before everybody else does. The barrier being 12 or more. Once somebody reaches that barrier, they've won the game, but the way you get there is kind of tricky. Let's get down to the table. I'll show you how it works, and then we'll come back with some final thoughts in just a few moments. <laughs> At the beginning of the game, each player will take their own deck of cards that are identical to every other deck of cards. And then the special characters are going to be shuffled together, and three are dealt to the first person. And then they will take and choose one card and add it to their deck and return the other two back to the deck to be shuffled back in. And then the next person is given three cards. And they're able to choose uh, the card that they want and add it to their deck and so forth and so on. Once all players have been given a special character, the rest are removed from the game and you're ready to begin. Now each round of Samurai Vassal is played out in three different phases. The first phase is discussing among the players what they think the best proposal is going to be. Now the different cards that you have in your hand are the proposals that you're going to make. So you could say that they think the three proposal would be the best one to play, or maybe uh, we should all play two proposals because that's gonna get us two trust points from the daimyo, and so forth and so on. And then once everybody thinks that they have decided which uh, proposal that they think is best, then they will choose a card and place it face down in front of them. Once everyone has chosen what card they're going to play, they're all revealed simultaneously. And once all cards have been revealed, the daimyo chooses which proposal he's going to accept. The first m rule that has to be passed is the majority rule. So he looks at the cards and whoever has the majority of cards out there, right now it's the two proposal because there are three of them, there are two threes and there are a five out here. So the majority rule would mean that the two proposals would be accepted and the threes and fives would be rejected. If there happens to be a tie in the numbers that are out here, for example, if this one had been a three, then it would go to the convincing power of the proposal, which means that the higher number would win. So if this one were a three, then the threes would win, even though there is an equal number of threes and twos. But then there is also special powers that come on the cards. For example, this five means that joint proposals are broken. The majority rule is canceled and he wins on his own. So in this particular case, even though the twos have the majority, this five over here breaks that rule and means that only one trust point is awarded to this player and everybody else's is turned over and rejected. At this point, another round would begin where each player chooses another card for their proposal. And of course, there is another round of discussion between the players to see which proposal would be the best. And as we've already seen, you don't have to actually do what you say. You can try to be sneaky and get people to think that you're gonna play one card when you're actually going to play another. Once everybody has chosen their card for this second round, those cards are flipped over simultaneously as well. And once all those cards have been flipped over, we go back to, to the majority rule. So we look, we have a two, a two, a two, a three, a two over here. So definitely the twos have the majority. Now this one here is a three, but down here at the bottom of the card, this is a special power, which means that this one is counted as a two if two is the winning proposal. And at this point, it is the same. Uh, that is the case, that two is going to be the winning proposal. This one has the same uh, 
special power here. But so in this particular case, everyone is going to have their proposal accepted and they're going to gain a number of trust points equal to the ones that are on their card and any others. So a black player over here was going to get two plus one. So they're going to get three. This player here is going to get only one because their first proposal was rejected. So it only goes to this card. This player will get two. This player has uh, no trust tokens up here. This is another special ability player. And this one says that they, they just simply get four trust tokens one time only. So that person will get four. Pretty good card to play at this point. And then this person over here gets two. And this person gets two as well. And so now they would continue with another card play and you would continue playing cards with the caveat being that everybody does have a card in their hand, the strategizing card, which allows them to pick up all of the cards that they have previously played and put them back into their hand. And that is playable at any point in time. And that's how the game is played out until somebody reaches 12 or more uh, trust points and that person would be the winner. And now that you have a basic understanding of how the game plays, I can go over some of the other rules, some of those special abilities that uh, now you can understand how they might work. For example, this one, the Cherry Blossom Party, uh, has a negate the five. So whenever somebody plays that invasion card and kind of breaks the majority rule, if a one is played, it negates those five players, those invasions. So uh, this is to counteract the invasion card. But it is a one, and it also gives you one point. Uh, surveying, we already saw, it doesn't have a special ability, but it does give you two. Fortressing, no special ability, it gives you one. And then War Drills is a four, which is a pretty strong, convincing thing. But it also says that uh, anybody who's... Uh, proposals were rejected have to lose a trust point this turn. Some other of the special abilities here. First of all, this one, uh, if you win a proposal with this one, you'll also get a coin for every rejected proposal that you had. So, for example, if this person had played it on that second round, they would have gotten one plus one more. They would have gotten two trust tokens that turn instead of just the one for their one card. This one is a special card that allows you to pull your cards back up into your hand, but it also gives you two trust points, which is different from the strategizing card. As you can see, it doesn't have any trust points up here. Another proposal card here. This is a uh, special card. Everybody who's had their proposal rejected, loses two coins instead of one, like was seen earlier. Here's another one that scores or is accepted if fives are accepted, uh, the accepted proposal that round. This special card actually cancels all of the special abilities of the other cards that are in there. It's called Do It The Old Way, where uh, basically uh, no strategizing, none, none of the special abilities of these cards are used. It's just straight majority and so forth and so on. And so as you can see, there's a lot of kind of sneaky, tricky ways that you can play cards in this game to try to uh, get yourself to the top of the heap, so to speak, uh, at 12 trust points before the end of the game. So that is Samurai Vassal. Now I have to say that when I did the unboxing for this game, I was a little excited to give the game a try because it looked like it was going to be uh, a neatly themed game, and I like those. Um, and I also liked the artwork for the most part. There were some weird looking huge eyeballs on some of those cards, but uh, for the most part, I, I liked the look of it. Uh, I liked the fact that it looked like it was going to be a very simple game to teach. When uh, rule books come on, you know, basically pamphlets, that is a good thing for me because I'm, I struggle with reading through rule books, I, I'll be honest with you. But at the same time, sometimes a shorter rule book means that there just isn't that much game there. So I, I was kind of putting that one on the back burner. I was interested in the game and 
it somewhat disappointed me. Now, before I get into those things that disappointed me about the game, I do want to touch on the things that I did like about the game. First of all, it plays very easily and simply. It is not difficult to teach at all. And this is one of those games where you can crack it open without hardly any research at all and just play it right off the bat. Because the, the rules are simple, they are straightforward. You choose a card, lay it face down, uh, reveal them simultaneously. Uh, you get to choose majority, look at special powers, and then gain your trust points. And then you go to the next round and you keep doing that until somebody reaches 12 uh, trust points. So it's very simple to play and it's very simple to teach. Uh, part of it uh, rests upon the trickery, the kind of guile that you can use, the, the deceit that you can use during the course of the game to try to uh, trick and bluff your opponents into playing something while you play something else. Uh, and that's where you can go. I didn't see a whole lot of people winning on just doing what everybody agreed to do. You got more points, generally speaking, by doing something different, by getting everybody to think you're playing one way and play the other. So that level of uh, trickery, haha, gotcha, is also fun. It wasn't so heavy of a game that if somebody stabbed you in the back and, and basically lied to you that you were just, why would you do that to me? You know, it wasn't like that at all. It was very lighthearted, very fun. And uh, I liked that aspect of it. So those are the pros. Now, the cons are quite simply, it's too simple, first of all. Uh, and that might be kind of unfair because I, I understand that a lot of people really enjoy just simple games. But I have to say that basically after, after just a few plays of this, the people I was playing with, they were done. They, and they didn't really have a desire to play it again. Uh, so uh, that just kind of tells me that it's just too simple. There's not enough meat to sink your teeth into, so to speak. Uh, so that was kind of an unfortunate uh, dilemma that, the, that, an, that an easy and simple game kind of runs into every once in a while, and unfortunately this one did. Another con of the game was the, the card quality. And it, it, it had a very strange deck of cards where it had a very glossy finish on one and a very matte finish on the other side, which I thought was very strange because uh, I found that, first of all, the glossy side sticks together with the other cards a little bit too much. So you have the glossy on the matte and, the, and they just kind of almost stick together more than a normal deck of cards would. Uh, additionally, the cards warped, um, and I can't get them to stay unwarped or anything like that. So the card quality in, in the box is not that great, unfortunately. Now, my final con about the game is actually something that I thought was a little bit cool at the beginning when I was doing the unboxing, and that is those tokens are actually 3D printed, or at least they look like they're 3D printed to me. And um, I thought that was kind of interesting, but... Upon more plays of it, they just don't look that great. Uh, they, they look very rough around the edges and like they're a prototype more than anything else. So that is that. I thought the 3D printed tokens were as a cool idea, but after a while, they just don't have the same aesthetic pleasure that a better set of components probably would have. So all in all, I'm going to say that this is a really a middle of the road. I wasn't so disappointed that I'm going to say this is gone forever and I will never play it again. It's not that bad, but at the same time, I don't think it's really that good either. So for me, it's right there in the middle of the road, a 5 out of 10. I, I wish I could say more good about it, but I really can't. Um, because it just isn't there. Another thing that kind of, and this isn't really a con or anything like that, but I want to see components on the back of a box. I want to see something that tells me what the game looks like, not just another picture. Now, I know in the unboxing video, I was like, why did they make this the cover and this not the cover? Um, and other people chimed in saying, well, sometimes minimalistic, you know, is, is a good approach and people like that. I get it. I understand that. Uh, but for me, I want to see what the game looks like on the back, and it just isn't there. So unfortunately, I can't really put my weight behind this one. I'm going to go with 5 out of 10 always, 
I say this every single time I get a chance to try before you buy. You might like it a lot. Uh, and I could just be off the deep end on this one. But unfortunately, I could not like it. That's a 5 out of 10. Samurai Vazel, we'll see you guys on the flip side. <laughs>